Frange. Carol can see that Kara is upset but doesn't understand why. Kara explains to her that it had been five years and they still haven't found another statue. Kanumi? Merkel Zero? Carol assured her that they would. While Carol was getting ready for bed, flashes of someone else's life came into her mind. What could it mean? The next morning at breakfast, Carol tells Kelly she has had a strange memory about meeting someone in a flower shop. She didn't understand what it meant. Kelly assured Carol that it was fine, and perhaps she ran into the woman on one of their shopping trips. Carol stated that she was right and left it alone. After breakfast, it was time to go to the gym. The Rena girls were doing their usual routine. Carol wanted to use one of the machines, but a guy was using it. She asked if he would be long. He said that depended on Carol telling him her name. His name was Polo. They spoke for a while and seemed to enjoy each other's company. Carol was able to use the machine and Kara came up to her to ask what that guy was talking to her about. She stated that he was just making conversation. Kara told her that she should focus more on her workout and less on talking to strangers. Runa. <laughs> Carol didn't understand but decided to not argue. <laughs> After the gym, they decided to go to the movie theater to catch a double premiere of a movie called The Cat's Meow. It was a new addition to the area and the community loved it. During intermission, Carol went outside to get some fresh air and ended up playing in the water fountain. She didn't even notice Polo approaching her and he decided to jump in the water fountain with her. They spoke for a while and he told her that he wanted to see her again. Carol told him that it wouldn't be possible. Later that night, Carol was getting ready for bed. She didn't notice that Kara was sitting by her bed. She would appear and disappear like that. Carol asked if she needed something, and Kara said yes. She wanted to apologize if she was harsh to her earlier at the gym. She didn't mean to, she just wanted Carol to know that there is no room for love in their lives. Carol asked if she had ever been in love, but Kara just walked away. The next morning, Kara spread the news that the statue has been found at a computer shop. While Carol was talking to the owner, the girls were outside talking amongst themselves. A woman was walking down the street when she stopped to talk to Carol. She asked if they had met before, and Carol said she didn't think so, but that she had to go. A few days later, the elderly woman who owned the shop showed up. Her name was Agnes, and it was Carol's duty to make her feel at ease. She showed her around the home and finally to her room. 
Agnes was thankful, but didn't understand why she was being shown such kindness. Carol told her that's what this sisterhood was all about. Agnes told her that she sounded like a robot. After dinner, Carol kept thinking about what Agnes said and decided to take a walk to clear her head. She sat down for a bit and then decided to leave before anyone knew she was gone. She ran into Polo and he stated that he was doing the same as her. He asked if she was available for coffee tomorrow and Carol said that she wasn't and she couldn't see him again. Polo asked why and she told him that her sisterhood wouldn't allow it. Polo said she sounded like a robot and that she should just stay for a little bit. Carol agreed and they lit a fire by the cliff. It was the best night of her life. The next day, Carol was on her way to get breakfast when she saw Madison in the library reading a book. No one else was around, so she took it upon herself to ask Madison some questions. She asked when Madison joined the club and if there were any other members before her. Madison stated that she didn't remember anything before joining the arena club, but that it didn't matter because she was part of a sisterhood. Those words echoed in Carol's mind until Kara came in the room. Madison left as it was time for yoga. Kara told Carol that everyone is supposed to stay in the house at night, and Carol couldn't take it anymore. Who was Kara to tell her what she could and couldn't do? Kara said she was trying to help, but Carol didn't believe her. It was in that moment that Carol knew she had to stop the initiation of Agnes. She didn't know how, but she had to do something. Later that day at the gym, Carol ran into Polo, who had to show her something on his phone. It was about a woman who believed to have seen a younger version of her missing mother. It was her. Carol couldn't believe it. Polo asked her what she wanted to do, and she told him to meet her tonight. Later that evening, at dinner, Kara was telling Agnes that she must join them for meditation after dinner. Agnes agreed and Carol thought that was the perfect time. They went back to the house and while Agnes was getting ready, Carol asked her how she was feeling. Agnes replied that she was fine but had never meditated before. Carol told her that walking always cleared her mind. So Agnes agreed to join her. Agnes was confused. So Carol just simply stated that she was in danger and that she would be safe with Polo. Carol told Polo to take Agnes back home and to call the police. Polo told Carol to come with them, but she had to stay and stop Kara once and for all. As soon as Carol stepped in the house, Kara started yelling, asking where she has been and that Agnes has disappeared. Carol told her that she would never see her again and she will stop her. Kara didn't think so and wanted to show Carol something. Carol followed Kara to the basement she didn't know existed. Carol saw the frozen bodies of elderly women that Kara has tricked including hers. <laughs>